Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is James and I'm an electrical engineer and I hope to upload videos to my channel that are interesting to anybody that's interested in electrical engineering and other STEM subjects as well. This video is about electrical calculations and specifically how to do the adiabatic equation. So the first thing to point out is that there are actually two adiabatic equations and they're both mentioned in different sections in the wiring regulations but I find it useful to explain them together. Now the first equation at the top is referred to in BIS 7671 regulation 434.5.2 and this relates to the thermal withstand of the cable under short circuit conditions so either line to neutral or line to line in three phase. The equation at the bottom is referred to in regulation 543.1.3 and this relates to the minimum size of the circuit protective conductor to withstand the effects of current under the fault conditions. So this will give you the minimum size of conductor for the CPC. So looking at the first equation in a bit more detail, the equation for thermal withstand, what we're looking for here is the time in seconds and that is the time that the cable can withstand that level of short circuit current. So the formula is T equals K squared multiplied by S squared divided by I squared. So the K is the K value for the line conductor, which is found in table 43.1. S is the size of the line conductor. And I is the actual short circuit current. And we find this by dividing the voltage by the ZSC. Now ZSC is the loop between line and neutral. So you may have also seen this um, as, as Z brackets L to N on your test kit. So here we have an example and what I always do is start with the short circuit current which can be calculated by dividing the voltage by the ZSC or Z brackets L to N as you might have seen it uh, written on your test kit. So if the ZL to N for a 6 amp radial circuit is 0 0.81 ohms and the voltage is 230 volts, by using the equation we can determine the short circuit current as follows. So it would be 230 volts divided by 0 0.81, which would give us an answer of 283.95 amps. Now, if we assume that the radial circuit is wired in 1.5 mil flat PVC, 70 degree copper, the adiabatic equation can be carried out as follows. So that would be T would be equals to 115 squared. Now, 115 is the K value for 70 degree copper. So 115 squared multiplied by 1.5 squared divided by 283.95 squared. And that would give us an answer of 0 0.36 seconds. And so what we're looking for here is for the time in seconds to be greater than the time that it would take the protected device to operate. Because that would tell us that the cable is able to withstand that current for long enough for the protected device to operate. So the second adiabatic equation is the, for the minimum size of CPC. So that is S equals the square root of I squared multiplied by T divided by K. And so in this equation, we're talking about fault current, which is always live to earth. So to find the current I, we divide the voltage by the ZS. So the ZS obviously can be measured or it can be calculated um, whichever way. Um, and so, so that would give us the actual fault current. The time for the fault current to operate for the protective device is found in the time curve chart for that protective device. And the K value again for the conductor is found in table 43.1, bearing in mind the differences in uh, temperatures for, for different uh, cables could be 70 degrees or 90 degrees. Now for most types of protected device, you'll be able to find the time curve characteristics in appendix three of BS 7671. But there are some types of protected devices such as MTCBs or ACBs that aren't listed in BS 7671. In that situation, if you need to find the value for T so that you can carry out the equation, 
what you would need to do is to contact the manufacturer and request a time curve chart for the relevant protective device. And so what you would then do is you would take the fault current for the circuit and plot it on the manufacturer's time curve chart to find the value for T. So that will give you the time that it would take the fault current to operate the protective device. Now, a quick word on table, uh, table 54.7 in BS 761. It's, it's worth pointing out at this stage that if the CPC is the same size as the line conductor, it is not necessary to carry out the second adiabatic equation that I just mentioned, as this will comply with the requirements of table 54.7. So this makes sense because if the first adiabatic equation has been carried out and it's been established that the line conductor can withstand the short circuit current, then a CPC of the same size should be able to withstand the fault current because short circuit current is usually much higher than the fault current. So the next question is, what if the CPC is a different material to the line conductor? If the CPC is a different material to the line conductor, for example, when using the armor of an SWA cable as the CPC, Table 54.7 provides a formula for calculating the minimum size of CPC. If this is something that you'd be interested in hearing more about, please see my video on my channel for using SWA as CPC. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel where you'll find more videos about electrical engineering and other STEM subjects as well.